Welcome, Scorpio, to your Scorpio June 2021 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James. For those of you who are just stopping by for the first time, and for the subscribers, what a pleasure to see you again. Much love and affection to you always. I send you lots of energy during the month, you know, to make your lives easier and ease some of your burdens. And I've had the great pleasure of doing uh, some one-on-one -on -one clairvoyant readings with some of you Scorpio gentlemen and ladies in the course of the last month, haven't I? You know who you are. And uh, it, it's been great to get to know you better. And of course, if you would like to have your own personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me, then just check out the information that's in the description box below and you can see how easy it is for that to happen from wherever you happen to be in the world. Have a look at the website in particular. Now, I think you'll find it interesting. Now, what we're going to do is take five cards because here, as you know, five is all we need, don't we? Because it's so... Each of the cards for us is so jam-packed full of information. Don't you find? And we shall do the same again. Now this is a medieval artwork deck. There's the King of Swords. Yeah, sort of like European, Western, Central European uh, artwork from a medieval period. There's the Five of Coins. And I think you'll find it quite interesting. I don't think I've used it uh, on the channel before, so it's uh, it's something which you'll, um, you'll get to enjoy. In fact, you probably don't see it very much anywhere. I mean, most of the decks that I have are ones that it seems that are quite um, rare, I, I think. But let's have a look here what there is to the Queen of Swords. There was the Two of Coins, incidentally, in the middle there. Let's take the final one, shall we, and see what there is in store for you. The highly talented and attractive Scorpio. Temperance. Well, Temperance is your middle name, isn't it? Hmm? Why don't you come and sit down next to me? We'll have a look at the medieval artwork on this deck together while I do the reading for you. There you are now. Can you see? I think I might have a look at Temperance first because it can be dealt with quite um, quickly, I think, in this position and this area here. Here is the lovely medieval work of temperance. Look, temperance helps melt away conflict. Its magical elixir blends and balances energy, bringing rebirth of the self. In this process, you begin to integrate the spiritual and material worlds of the conscious and subconscious self. Temperance combines and blends the mystical masculine and feminine energies to bring healing and promise. This process of creation moves stagnation and ignites the life force and imagination. You begin to explore and expand your inherent individual talents and let them burst out into the world. Now, temperance is Latin for to mix. Temperance's job is to flow the creative energies of opposites back and forth, alchemically balancing, combining and recombining the components of life and spirit until they mix into the ideal mixture or solution, creating harmony, balance and beauty as temperance flows with the inner balance of the cosmos, it guides you to blend and temper the energies of your inner and outer worlds to expand and embrace a higher purpose. Temperance is healing, inspiring, magical and transformative. It brings balance, creativity and energy to any project of yours, any relationship of yours or endeavor that you are pursuing. Temperance's calming energies can bring harmony and peace to anything that is in disharmony. Practice 
the art of temperance with your emotions, attitudes, and beliefs, the quiet meditative energy here slowly ignites the powerful life force within to bring it to give birth to magnificent creation. The energy of temperance for you this month is alive, magnetic, and beautiful, inspiring you to become the creator of your own life. Now we have the King and Queen of Swords both together here. Let's have a look at the King of Swords first. Now, of course, in medieval days, kings basically ruled by way of violence and fear. And I think that the image here represents that. But here, really, the, the King of Swords is a mediator between heaven and earth. His lightning fast mind gives him the ability and will give you the ability to think abstractly, igniting keen insight and groundbreaking ideas. He is a master visionary, bringing the order of nature with the expansion of science to a higher octave of understanding and balance. The King of Swords is the mastermind of his brother kings in the Tarot bringing thought into action. And that is what you will be doing. He is an adventurer of the mind, exploring and testing its limits. His genius intellect sees beyond the horizon of ordinary minds. Now he has mastered fair and sound discernment, I think. He speaks from divine truth seeking truth and authenticity in all beings and things. He is a man of great power, ruling his kingdom with wisdom and integrity. He represents the informed, fair judge in all of us. When the King of Swords enters, he indicates a time of moving in new directions with purpose and clarity. The king signals a time to trust your inspirations, putting new inspired ideas into action. He brings opportunity to expand and open your mind. Let's pull him out a little bit there so we can see him in the context of others. I think what we'll see here is that um, he asks you, are you living your life to your soul self. Your soul self will connect you to the divine, bringing peace and clarity. He brings opportunity to expand and open your mind, as I say, and he views life's situations with a broader perspective. When you channel divine truth and wisdom, heightened mental clarity is available and spiritual breakthroughs or eureka moments can occur. The truth really will set you free. Now he has entered here, I think, because there could be some legal situations or major decisions needing concentrated thought. So be informed, exercise your intellect, and trust your intuition before you come to a conclusion or a judgment. The King of Swords can represent someone counseling you or advising you in legal situations. He can indicate a interest in the legal world or in psychology or counseling in general. Needed information to help solve a problem may be coming to you, I think bringing mental peace and healing. You may become a leader of a new concept or program, I think. This king brings a powerful intellectual time where truth brings vision and success. Now, on the same sort of theme is, I assume is, 
Well, I was going to say it's his wife, but this looks like uh, well, the Queen of Swords here. And it looks like this guy has not unstacked the dishwasher with the result. But here we have the, the, the Queen of Swords, gracious and just. She approaches all situations in life prepared with focused authority. The Queen of Swords is independent and confident. Now with a photographic memory for details, she symbolizes the ultimate problem solver. The Queen does not recognize excuses or justifications. As a warrior of truth and honesty, she does not tolerate false perceptions in herself or in others. She thinks ahead, makes a plan, communicates it and takes action with a precise mind and strong will. She cuts through confusion, fear and doubt. Now, it has to be said, and, and I will, and look, I will say it, that um, this could well be very much, I have a great feeling of Libra around this and also of Scorpio. So some may find the Queen of Swords stern and intimidating. She is in a sense, the least emotional of the four Queens in the, in the pack of the tarot cards. The Queen of Swords shares the element of water with her sister Queens, because she is a Queen, but her strong mind, air, fights the feelings of the heart, which is water. She has experienced deception, loss, sorrow, and life's hard knocks. Her independent, brilliant mind helped her survive her travels through the lessons of the suit of swords. Rather than become a victim, the queen worked hard through her challenges. Through her difficulties, she has become wise and powerful. Her struggles and misfortunes have made her a woman to reckon with. Now in her journey through the suit of swords, she suppressed her emotions not wanting to expose her heart. As a result, she is more confident conducting herself through her intellect, viewing emotions as a weakness. Her challenge is keeping her mind and heart in balance, giving both equal respect. She needs to recognize that her keen perception comes from her intuitive abilities. And this noble queen needs to mend that bridge to come into her full power and, and authority. She awakens the sacred warrior of clarity and truth within you, cutting away the blocks that shadow your inner light and strength. And she brings to you wisdom and healing. Right, now I want to move from this Queen of Swords to this Five of Coins. A good two of Coins coming after it. Now this Five of Coins, what does it have to say to us? Well, there are two people here that look to be engaged in business, don't they? Well, this is Mercury ruling the first decan of Taurus. And the Five here has associated with it with, for me the planet of Mars, which is provides instability. There's also with the number five, the sense of withdrawal, of bringing in, of taking back with it as well. I won't go into the spiritual reasons for that now. I'll do a separate video on that at some stage in the future. But Mercury ruling the first decan of Torah. Well, the, the speed and fluidity of Mercury is weighed down in slow, heavy Taurus. And the problem is that Mars is coming in here as well. So fives are, as a result of this Mars, are associated with instability. And it can also refer to material loss or worries. Maybe some setbacks that you're feeling of. Maybe is there a sense of a lack of belief in yourself? I mean, these other cards have told you that that should not be the case. So this is really the odd one down. Maybe you feel you're down on your luck. 
could be that there's some unemployment involved or that you're losing your faith in things. There's a degree of pessimism, brooding coming about. Now, I very much get the sense that this is something that has been going on for some time and that you haven't dealt with this thing which is causing you this under the surface worry. You might be thinking to yourself, am I getting myself into a situation that I might not be able to get out of? Will events overwhelm me? Well, worry, worry is about the past and the future and neither of which can we do anything about. And ask yourself this, if you knew for sure that next Tuesday at midday, you would, despite good health, drop dead, you were going to die at midday next Tuesday, would you spend the time between now and then worrying about things? Is there something which poses a threat to your overall security? That's the Taurus aspect of it. This could be unexpected expenses or job worries or maybe even disruption in your family life. But you know, you need to recognize that, first of all, worrying does nothing. And second, worrying can cause you to just sit there and do nothing, which can make things worse. So I'd say, give it to God. Just give it to God. There is a, a, a chapter, there's an Old Testament um, work, Hebrew Bible, uh, Book of Psalms. I think it's Psalm 95, verse 6, which says, Come, let us bow down and kneel, bend the knee before the Lord our Maker. Well, meditating on that verse will diffuse negative energy and distress, and purifying light will banish unseen, ominous forces which dwell around you. I think what you're in the situation at the moment of is this, is that you are now ready to look at your situation as it is. You now have an opportunity to free yourself by initiating the necessary discussion, either with partners or with yourself, because I think that only clear and open communication is going to facilitate progress for you. In what areas or situations are you not clear and decisive enough? With which people do you need to clarify things? But nevertheless, say this to yourself because it is true. I am straightening out my life. I am ready to look at my life as it is and trust in the process of resolving my fears. Well, what does that leave us with? Let's have a look. We've done these. It leaves us with the Two of Coins. Well, this is the Lord of Harmonious Change, this card. And it is Saturn in the first decan of Capricorn. Now that's great because Saturn actually is the ruler of Capricorn. And so that is a good thing. Now, the two of coins, and sometimes you'll hear them referred to as pentacles or discs. But the two of coins brings change and growth, creating an opportunity to bring a balance between your inner beliefs and your outer reality, bring them into harmony. It also represents handling two or more situations at one time successfully. Life can feel like a juggling act with deadlines, demands, commitments and distractions happening all at once. When you work and play from a balanced and harmonious platform, even the most complex and conflicting situations can be handled successfully. The, 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 the trick is flexibility, balance, and having fun, recreating energy. The gift of this Two of Coins is the talent for rebalancing and integrating life's challenges and opportunities with grace and ease. With the change that the Two of Coins brings, you can be in control, focused, aware, and balanced, 
Or you can be struggling, feeling uncertain, not trusting and fearful of the future. Well, which one do you think is better? But each experience stretches you mentally, emotionally, spiritually and physically. Change can place you in an uncomfortable situation, testing your core values, you know. The energies of the conscious and the subconscious start shifting, asking you, are your inner beliefs and truth matching your life's path? You begin to discover what you align with. Thoughts, ideas, lifestyle, or spiritual beliefs. Change identifies your inner oppositions, your weaknesses, your strengths. It's free therapy, in a sense. It brings a heightened awareness of how the law of cause and effect works. You are the creator of your life. When you create your individual realities, how will that affect the evolution of those around you? Creativity, organization, balancing and rebalancing symbolize the, the energy of this two of coins. As you begin to master the Two of Coins energy. Change becomes your ally, bringing you wisdom, adaptability, and alignment with your polarities. You understand how the macrocosm and the microcosm are connected and work together. You begin to live in the present, and there is no fear of change. And when the Two of Coins arrives, it is the time to be open and flexible. Change is coming, so don't fight it. Make it fun and creative. This card symbolizes the creative problem solver. Change helps you grow and expand. New ideas or enterprise want to be birthed into form at this time. This card brings a desire to be in control of your life and activities. It brings the gift of balancing and handling many situations at the one time. The Two of Pentacles asks you, who and what do you align with and what needs to be let go? It indicates turn of events, transition and potential. It brings vitality to the body, shifting health issues to the positive. And if you are having any trouble making decisions or in finishing projects or giving an outer appearance that everything is great, but on the inside it's a mess, then look at the energy of this card. Understand its meaning and what we have just discussed. And you will triumph over any adversity. Well, what a fantastic set of cards for you. That's the way it is for you this month. Well, there it is, your June 2021 reading. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did uh, providing it to you. I'm sure that you did. Now, if you did do, can you please leave a like? Uh, because the YouTube gods like uh, likes on channels and it allows other people to enjoy what we enjoy. But look, I, I love doing that for you, and I think it's going to be a, a very good month for you. A couple of things to get over, a little bit of, you know, a bump here and there, but things moving forward really well. And isn't it interesting how much information can be derived from just looking at the one card? Never ceases to amaze me. But until I see you again next time, remember one thing, and it is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Until then, it's bye for now.